Hello everyone, and welcome to your 82nd Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about notarizing your macOS applications. Now, if you're already distributing your application through the Mac App Store and have no interest in shipping outside the Mac App Store, then you can pretty much just leave this tutorial now. If you are looking to ship your applications outside the Mac App Store, then notarization is probably a very important aspect of shipping your application outside of that because of 10.15 or Catalina, it becomes very difficult to open applications that are not notarized. So what is notarization? Well, it's basically the process of sending your application to Apple. They do an automatic verification to see that the application doesn't contain malware or other bad malicious things. And if your, notar your application checks out in like two to five minutes, then it'll give you a ticket to staple to your application and now you can export your app and uh, your users will thank you because they will uh, be able to actually open your application. So what does this look like from a user's perspective? Well, if you open up an application that does not uh, have notarization or is not notarized, you get this very daunting message of this alert that the developer cannot be verified and the only options you get are to move the application to the trash or cancel, um, but you can't open it unless uh, you're, you know, 10% of your users that are uh, really savvy, they might right click on this and open the application after they've, you know, probably searched online for this. And they will find that now they have the option to open the application like that. So, you know, you've already lost most of your users if you've made them uh, jump through these hurdles. If you notarized your application, uh, the experience that you get is this, which is a lot less daunting, no evil warning sign. Uh, it just asks you whether you, uh, you know, it just states that you downloaded it from the internet and are you sure you want to open it. It also gives the users this little reassurance that Apple checked it for malicious software and when they didn't find any. And most importantly, they give you the option to open the application. So uh, that is the difference between a not notarized and notarized application. If you want to actually inspect an application to see whether or not it is notarized, uh, we're gonna just jump over to terminal here, and there's uh, this handy little spctl command that you can use, and you just can say dash vv for verbose, and uh, a is the application path that it's expecting, and you can just drop in any application you wanna check. So on that first one that we said was not notarized, we can see that it says uh, it was rejected and there is no usable signature. So that's uh, pretty bad, basically. Um, for an application that uh, did notarize, uh, the, uh, what, what you're end up go going to end up seeing is something that looks like this, which is the application was accepted and it was a notarized developer ID. And then it tells you what developer actually uh, you know, notarize this application. So um, yeah, that's pretty much the difference between notarized and not notarized applications. And so if you're shipping an app outside of the Mac App Store, you really probably want to notarize your application. Uh, and just full disclosure, I have no idea what these applications do. They are totally random ones that I downloaded online just to get the examples for you. So, you know, uh, take that with what it's worth. Okay, so uh, what can we do if we want to notarize our own applications? Well, the easy, straightforward way is just using Xcode. So to do this, we go up to Product Archive, and you'll have an, ar an archive out of this. You go over to Distribute App, and you are not distributing on the App Store. You want to do a developer ID to distribute directly to customers. You hit that. And then they have the two options. So the first is to upload the application to Apple's notary service, and this is how you really notarize. If you skip this and just hit export, this will bypass notarization, and you will have to do it manually, or you just won't do it at all. So anyway, we want to notarize through Xcode. This is the easy path you can take. So we'll hit upload, and it will. we want to automatically sign and it'll do all this nice little processing, and now you're good to go. So we'll upload the app, and this will take you know however long or however large your application is. In my case, it's just an easy sample, so it'll not take very long. 
And now it'll tell you that the uh, application was uploaded to the notary service and we'll let you know when it's ready. And it'll let you know in this little status section here, uh, it'll give you the option to export the application once it has successfully notarized the application. Now, another way or another approach to this is perhaps you have a setup where you're not just exporting your application within Xcode. Perhaps you have a build script that will, you know, go through the full process of building your application from an archive uh, and then, you know, gets gives you a release build version and then maybe it'll zip it up and then upload it to a server somewhere, right? Perhaps you have one of these workflows. I know because I had to do this for uh, an app that I maintain and so that's why I thought of doing this tutorial. But um, so let's talk about how you would do it in that approach. So your build script probably, you know, already actually uh, generates an application for you. You're probably not using the organizer to generate your app, but uh, I, I don't have a build script ready for that. So I'm just going to show you what you would do if you already had generated the app from your build script. So we would have something like developer ID. Uh, oh, I'm going to have to generate a new thing here. So let me re-archive. All right, so, uh, and as you can see uh, from that previous app that we had just sent up to the notary service, Apple has uh, let us know that it is ready for distribution. And if you hit this export app button, it'll automatically staple the ticket from the notarization service onto the app and it'll be ready to go. So you could just export the app, zip it up, send it to anybody, and uh, you'd get that nice uh, easy path that I showed for that application that was notarized before. All right, so back to the manual case though. So we have our uh, archive here. I distribute the app and we do still developer ID, but instead of uploading it to the notary service, I can just export it like this. And we'll automatically do this. And again, you would probably already have all of this full workflow built out into your build script so that you're not uh, you know, messing with the UI. But regardless, that's what we're, we have here. Okay, so now that I have the application exported, we have our little section here and I have the app right here. So this app, um, assuming that, you know, we didn't already notarize it automatically through Xcode, um, we can uh, do a variety of things with this app. So this app right here would not, uh, it would not actually have the, the ticket stapled to it and we could actually validate that that's the case. So uh, if we want to check to see if an app actually has the ticket stapled to it for um, so basically the, the ticket that uh, comes back from the notarization service, you want to basically uh, ticket or uh, staple the ticket rather to the application so that anybody, whether they're connected to the internet or not, can open up this application and they won't have any issues. So uh, you always want to make sure that the ticket is stapled to the uh, application. The way you can do this is running the validate command on a given application. So I can pass this one in here. And we can see that it says uh, this particular application does not have a ticket staple to it. So we're gonna run through the whole process of how we can go from a totally non-notarized application to a fully notarized plus stapled application. All right, so what I'm gonna do is start off with how we notarize. So notarizing is using XC run, I'm just gonna hit the up arrow here. So XC run AL tool. And what we want to do is this dash dash notarize app option. And there's a bunch of uh, other parameters you're wanting to pass in so that you can generate this app. So uh, first off, so you, you want to do dash dash notarize app. Then you provide this bundle ID thing. I'm not actually sure if this has to match your application bundle ID, but um, this is kind of just what the, uh, there is a sort of documentation that Apple gives and this, follows closely to what uh, that documentation gives. So uh, basically I'm just using my bundle identifier plus uh, the dot zip at the end because it's gonna be a zip file. I don't, again, I don't actually know if that matters, um, but feel free to play around with it if you want. Um, then you pass the user in which your uh, developer ID is tied to. So mine is this email address here, which uh, maybe I should hide, maybe not, but that's uh, my user that is uh, my developer ID. And then there's the option to pass the password with the dash P command. So dash U for the user, dash P for password. And you can either type in your password directly right here, or there's an option to store your password in the keychain so that uh, you can actually just say at keychain and then some uh, sort of fake password thing that'll actually pull out the password 
uh, from the the keychain. And the nice thing about this is that if you have this ship this script shared with a lot of other people, you don't have to expose your actual developer ID password. And obviously that would be bad because, well, obvious reasons. So uh, never put your passwords anywhere. So that's uh, what I've done here. And there's an option if you uh, do dash dash uh, store password, I think it's called, you can find it in the help. It's pretty straightforward. You just, uh, um, I'll, I'll leave a link for all that in the description below. But basically I've gone ahead and stored the password. So either store the password or into the password here manually. And then if you have multiple uh, providers that are tied to your account, you have to pass in the provider uh, that you have. So if your developer ID is tied to different accounts, maybe you're on a business one and you have a personal one, um, you want to you have to select the particular provider that you're trying to generate this with. And so this happens to be uh, myself here. And then we have uh, the last param, which is the file. And this is the file that you want to uh, you actually want to send up to notarization and very importantly notarization only accepts a zip format so if whatever you're trying to notarize which is probably just the application itself you want to uh, take that application and put it in a zip file so i'm going to go ahead and do that manually again you can handle this all in a nice uh, you know shell script to do this automatically for you but uh, we want to basically compress the application that we generated there and now we can upload this zip file to the notary service all right, uh, before I jump into that, uh, the one thing I want to do is just show you how you can get um, these uh, providers. So uh, you can do list providers, and uh, let me just see if I have, there's my existing one there. So you can pass in your uh, username and password with the list providers command, and this will give you a list of all the providers that you have. So here is my uh, short name version there, and you want to pass this provider short name as your ASC provider. All right, so now that we've done that, I better stop and uh, move on to what I actually want to get to here. So uh, we're going to do AL tool, uh, and then we're going to notarize the app. So we're going to notarize the app. Uh, let me just make sure I have all the right information. So bundle ID, my name, password, and the file, which is that path there. So we should be good to hit return. And now once you hit return, this is equivalent to the upload step that Xcode does automatically. So that command that you just ran is the equivalent to upload. And in just a little bit, it's going to tell you that uh, no errors uploading this uh, uh, zip file, and it will give you a request ID in response. So in your automated shell script, you can actually look for this request ID. And now that you have this request ID, you can start asking the notary service whether or not it has notarized the application. So uh, the next step is to start asking whether it um, notarized it or not. So to do this, we can, uh, we can do notarize info. So it's this uh, dash dash notarization info param. And this one's pretty simple. You just pass that ID that you just got back from uh, the previous notarize app command. And you pass in the user and password. And now you can start querying this value. So here we can uh, we just queried it, and you can see that the status is that this is in progress. So the notarization of this particular uh, app is in progress, and we're just going to have to wait. So uh, in a little bit, I'll come back to this and um, check out the status. All right. So after waiting a few minutes, we can check back in on our notarization status by running that exact same command, uh, notarization info on that UUID and we can see that the package was successfully approved and there's this uh, very useful log file. If you do happen to get an error, I highly encourage you to check out this URL that they give you. It actually gives you a very detailed log of exactly why uh, it would have failed if it did fail. So uh, make sure you check out that URL if you don't happen to get this status code of zero with package approved. All right, so now the very last step is that we notarized it with Apple servers, but we haven't actually notarized the application uh, by, st by stapling the ticket to the application. And this is important because if the application was ever to be run or opened without internet access or access to Apple servers for whatever reason, you still want your application to be able to uh, you know open. So we still wanna be able to staple this ticket onto the application. And we can check this by running, uh, so we can actually run stapler and we'll validate the application itself. And it's very important we, that we validate the application. We're not validating the zip file. So if I check this, we can see that the app 
uh, does not have a ticket stapled to it. And uh, that's obvious because we didn't really run anything to do that. So what we need to do is we need to run XC run stapler and we just say staple. And now we just pass the path to this application and voila, we have now stapled the application magically. So uh, the, it'll tell you that the staple and validate action worked if it did work. And if you wanna validate that it actually did work, you can just run the validate command again and it should say that the validation action worked. Uh, and lastly, you know, just for good measure, uh, you might also want to run uh, the SBCTL command uh, to make sure that uh, the application itself is all notarized. So we can run that again. If we do this, we can see that, you know, everything looks good. It was accepted and notarized, and it has me as the, you know, developer ID application. And so this app is now good to bundle up. So we're all set. All we would have to do to actually ship this application is we could, you know, zip up the app again. If we wanted, uh, very important that you do it again and not that you take the existing zip. So uh, you should actually just delete this zip if you uh, didn't do that already. And if you're trying to distribute this app, you could just compress it again into a new zip file. But this new zip file contains the now notarized and uh, stapled version of your app. Okay, so that is the full kind of rundown on doing this very manually. Obviously, if you're just using Xcode, just go the Xcode route. It's much simpler than doing it this way. Um, but if you do have a you know existing script that you need to integrate uh, into your sort of workflow, or you need to integrate notarization into that workflow, uh, you can follow these very simple steps. Uh, I've done this myself, and I'll leave a link for sort of where I did that in some of my own stuff. Uh, but basically, it's pretty simple. You just try to notarize and pass a bunch of information. And then if you just kind of make a loop out of it, you know, every minute or so, you check to see if the validation or the notarization succeeds. And once it does, you staple the ticket and regenerate the app into a new zip file. So that's pretty much it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Probably ran a little long, but uh, I will see you guys next week. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and share it with your friends. Ways to contribute and additional information are in the description. I'll see you next week.